How's the president doing? What's your assessment? We're at, I believe, 92 days. We're 92 days in. Yeah. I think the, uh, my assessment it really is a long answer. I think, I think the president personally is doing very well. I think that we are, he has got a problem, and I think it's not dissimilar from President Carter's, which is a big agenda. He's got a much worse time, and he has a problem that he has, in some ways, a government that's not of him. It's a man who campaigned on change, and he, and he has a government filled with inside Washington people. And you can argue about experience or whatever, but there's a real problem with that. I think that it is, the press has hurt him badly by making the environment sound like, and some of the polls have been so badly cooked, in my opinion, to reflect what the press, the New York Times, CBS, what they'd like it to be. And they're being misleading into thinking this is all very good. There has been from the beginning, which started off very high. He's running in any poll of voters. He's running about, he's going to end up around 55, maybe less, 55, 54. He'll end up higher among all adults. The real truth is that he has had, the Pew poll came out with this polarization problem. The Republicans have already all gone, much worse than Democrats left George Bush much earlier. George W. Bush, that was after the 2000 election. And that, there are reasons for that. And independents have started to move. The issue moving is, and it's not helping Republicans. Don't misunderstand. You know, the people are not pleased with Republicans. They are terrified of too much too soon. And if you track what I've been tracking, which is the sense of that this is too ambitious, the fear of what these deficits will do, the fear that the government is going too far. The thing is, the American people, the reaction and the concern that Obama is not being, and this is what I think his problem is, he ran as a candidate of change. He has allowed himself, he is allowing, and I watched this happen. And I was reminded after the session earlier today, I said to someone, Bill Romsey was at the beginning of this conversation with that person in South Carolina, that I wish the moment I most ever wanted to talk to Barack Obama was, was at that moment, because he needed to understand what happened to Jimmy Carter. And I won't get into all the reasons it also happened, but this thing of, being, of doing too much, getting off this track, and the problem of, there are many problems with this, but there are deep concerns in the American people. And I mean deep, and they are legitimate. And yet, at the same time, people would like him to succeed. It's not that they like the Republicans, but you already see the evidence. It's a very simple question right now. You know what the economy is going to be in a year, and I'll tell you what it's going to be. And I'm afraid that the problem is that I don't think any of the magic men know the answer to that problem. I think they've proven for weeks and months they don't know what, what's going on. And, the, uh, and I think the public is saying, they're looking at these deficits, and he's getting into the president has a problem. You cannot get up one day and say, announce, I'm going to do something about spending, because they see these numbers, these concerns are polling all the time, which is unprecedented. Uh, I mean, no, they're not unprecedented. The Clinton White House is the worst. They, they, president, president Clinton wouldn't go to the bathroom without a poll, and uh, almost literally. And, uh, and then when he didn't like the polls, he fired his pollster and hired another one. And, uh, which is uh, you know unusual, but the um, but they do a lot. They do weekly stuff. Obama doesn't particularly care about that stuff very much. I think he has great confidence himself. I think the problem is is to face a situation where you have a country on the one hand that isn't pleased with its politics, and a political elite that basically is very detached and has been for some time from the people. And I think the president got elected because it was a feeling that he would make the elite understand the country. And I think the problem he's having is uh, of whether or not that connection is still viable. And I think it is slipping. And I think the worst thing is, is let me tell you about politics. I learned this from Jimmy Carter. I remember Richard Nixon, Bill Clinton, they didn't have a problem. People knew what they were getting. They didn't have any doubts. People aren't. But when you invest in people a certain special hope, which is the, what there was in Jimmy Carter, and what there is with Obama, who himself in his autobiography speaks of that, about people project onto me what they wish or hoping for. He understands that phenomenon. The problem is that disappointing people is a far graver political burden to carry eventually than having already been what people thought and proving it, which is the Clinton-Nixon example. I would say that they thought Nixon was very competent. They didn't like him a lot, and they didn't think he was particularly on the up and up. 
And they didn't have, they had no idea of Watergate, but they thought he knew what he was doing. The Democrats had really screwed Vietnam up, in inflation, and Clinton after Bush won. And I, I, I think that I say this with some pain, but I say it with some conviction. And I think the Democratic Congress is taking the president down. All somebody's taking going over the cliff. This 53 percent. Remember, he won an election with the first time we have ever had an economic economy blow up in the middle of the campaign itself in September. He was running about even with McCain at that moment, Obama was. You had a president whose ratings were actually much worse than Jimmy Carter's. You had the disappointment with all these things in the economy, and the out party benefits on the economy enormously, and people were tired of Bush, but I thought Bush had basically, in the public mind, had disappeared. Uh, and then you had this crisis, and I thought the way McCain handled whatever, Point was, it went to six points that right after the bailout of the problem with the banks and never moved. Well, with those six points, remember, it was 53. This was not an endorsement. And this is why I'm surprised at the president. Surprised at the stimulus, that he didn't go in there and narrow it and win 80% of the votes from the Congress because the Republicans were desperate. They were dead. They were willing to do whatever reasonable he wanted. But when he turned that over to Harry Reid and Nancy Pelosi, one of the greatest strategic mistakes in history, I think this decision to sign the earmark bill after David Axelrod apparently urged him not to, to veto it, and I said this afternoon he never would have had to veto it. All he had to do was threaten, and every earmark would have been out there. But that would have been a moment to us because the Republicans were compromising themselves so much for fiscal responsibility, right, hand in hand with the Democrats. And uh, the uh, my point is is that that was a moment to test the issue of change. The, pro the thing is, is the numbers moving on going too far have already moved. And you can keep doing what some of these polls are doing, which is writing questions to get the answers you want. But anybody who's looking at the stuff that's serious, that I consider serious and thoughtful stuff is seeing this in huge disquiet growing, which is, what are my children and grandchildren going to face? And this idea that, the, that we were elected, the Democrats were elected, to produce, you know, a, rev, a, 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 you know, a revolution of all the things we ever going to have. And think you're going to put this over on the American people. And the press and the reaction, the Tea Parties are very significant, and they are not to be discounted. Those were generated pretty much locally. Republicans kept trying to attach themselves to it. People didn't want them, and they... Uh, and this one of the one of the people in my state, not out in South Carolina, got booed off the stage for voting for the stimulus, but voting for not for the stimulus, but for the bailout. They showed the tar. But but I'm just saying, I think that if I were there, based on history, I would argue a whole different picture than the president's being told, and they're con convincing themselves. And I want to tell you, he continues to elect Nancy Pelosi and Harry Reid to find what they we're going to do, and. They're, the Republicans are going to do extraordinarily well, not because anyone's voting for them, because they're going to throw a monkey wrench. But more importantly, the public has had it with all of them. The thing was, the Democrats were going to have to win an election. People kept saying, well, we'll elect the Democrats, that's going to make a difference. If that does not happen with this economy and what's going on, then it will not be simply, oh, the Republicans will win. I guarantee you there will be something very different coming. That is a long answer to the very hard question, but I, that's, I need this. That's, that's, that's